Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. We're here today to discuss the uh, arrest of Dr. James Ryan. He had a practice, a dental practice in Germantown. Uh, we've got Chief Marcus Jones, and we've got John McCarthy here. After they present uh, the statements of charges and uh, what happened during this investigation. We do have copies of news releases that we can uh, give to you all, as well as a mugshot of Dr. Ryan. Chief? Well, good afternoon. On January 26, 2022, uh, Montgomery County Police and Montgomery County Fire Rescue Service responded to an address in the 13900 block of Godwood Street, Clarksburg, Montgomery County, Maryland, for the report of an overdose. Sarah Harris, a 25-year-old female, was discovered deceased in the residence. An autopsy later done at the office of the Chief Medical Examiner's Office in Maryland would later determine the cause of Harris' death was ketamine and diazepam intoxication. And the manner of death at that time was undetermined. Harris's boyfriend, Dr. James Michael Ryan, was also at the residence that he shared with Harris. Dr. Ryan is an oral surgeon with a practice in Germantown. Also located in the residence at the time were various bottles of propofol, meat azolam, meat azolam, ketamine, and diazepam. Numerous hypodermic needles, syringes, and tourniquets were discovered nearby as well. These bottles are not the type of medication that would normally be dispensed from a pharmacy and are usually reserved for clinical medical settings. Detectives began an investigation into the facts and circumstances surrounding the death. Investigation determined that Harris visited Dr. Ryan in the fall of 2020 for a medical procedure. Harris had previous experience working in dental offices. Several weeks after the procedure, Dr. Ryan contacted Harris about a possible vacancy in his practice and was hired shortly thereafter. Harris and Dr. Ryan began dating right around the new year of 2021. Harris began spending significant time at Dr. Ryan's residence, eventually living, permanently, living there permanently in late summer of 2021. Investigators learned that family members noticed that Harris, Harris's physical appearance was changing over time and that she did not look healthy. On two different occasions, Harris was discovered in their residence surrounded by empty medicine bottles, similar to what was discovered at the death scene, used syringes and bloody clothing. In at least one instance, she was discovered in an altered state and had arms that were covered in needle marks and bruises. Investigators were able to obtain copies of text messages and other communications between Dr. Ryan and Harris. In these communications, both Harris and Dr. Ryan have frank and explicit conversations which depict Harris asking Dr. Ryan to obtain and or procure different drugs from the practice. Dr. Ryan repeatedly tells Harris that he is bringing her drugs, instructs her how to use the drugs and where she can find drugs in their residence. Dr. Ryan also provided instructions on how she could make the effects of some of the drugs more potent. Additionally, he mentions bringing home and or providing medical equipment, such as saline, fluids, needles, IV poles, to aid in the administration of drugs or in the recovery from the effects. 
conversations also indicate that Harris may have overdosed at least one time in December of 2021. She required CPR to resuscitate her, and investigators have not located a corresponding Montgomery County Fire Rescue Service call for service. Shortly after the overdose, Dr. Ryan tells Harris in a conversation that he dispensed ketamine to her while she was asleep. On today's date, Dr. James Ryan was taken into custody as he was going to his practice. He has been charged with second degree murder and related crimes. Bond information is currently unavailable. There is also a tangential administration, administrative investigation being conducted by the Drug Enforcement Administration Diversion Control Division. This investigation was a coordinated effort of the Montgomery County Police under the Maryland Criminal Intelligence Network, also known as MSIN. At this time, we'll have uh, Mr. McCarthy come forward. Uh, thank you, Chief. Uh, my name is John McCarthy. I'm the state's attorney for Montgomery County. As is obvious from the comments of the chief already preceding my coming to, to the podium, uh, the defendant is currently under arrest. Uh, he is currently pre uh, pending presentation to the district court commissioner at the Seven Locks facility here in Montgomery County. Uh, at the, he is there, there. He is still about fourth or fifth in line. So it could be an hour or two before he is actually physically before the commissioner. The commissioner has the authority in this matter, based on the nature of charges, being second-degree murder, to set a bond. Uh, the state is present. There are, uh, my attorneys are there. A team of my lawyers have been working with the chief's people for, for uh, several days on this particular matter. Uh, we are there to make argument about what the appropriate bond would be in this case. Uh, if Dr. D D Dr. Ryan was, in fact, held, uh, he would have a bond review before a district court judge tomorrow morning at 1 o'clock in the district court located in Maryland. Many of you, almost everybody here, I think, has attended those bond, bond reviews on a prior occasion. Uh, if he is released, he would be released on the condition set by the commissioner, we should know that within the next two hours. Um, the charges um, that are brought uh, against Dr. Ryan at this point in time, all charges, even, even those that, like murder, begin in the district court. This is a matter that will be in the district court. There are 10 total charges currently in the charging document pending against Dr. Ryan. Uh, the most serious charge uh, against him is a charge of second-degree murder, which carries a penalty, a maximum penalty of 40 years imprisonment. Uh, collectively with the other charges referred to by the chief, which are largely drug-related charges, his total exposure in terms of criminal penalty is 78 years imprisonment. Um, again, I, uh, I, I want to thank the chief. Our, our two offices have been working uh, together. And, and I also think we want to acknowledge the work of DEA. The DEA authorities have been working with us throughout the course of this investigation, and, and, and they have had access to the doctor following his, his arrest as well in terms of, uh, of their investigation. But uh, in any case, I'll turn it back over to the chief for any questions you may have for either one of us. Yes, sir. Um, are these drugs that he would have had access to Yes, because he is, uh, he does, I uh, believe, have a DEA license. Um, as you know, if you get a prescription from uh, any um, attendant physician or dentist or oral surgeon, um, they do have the authority to write prescriptions. So he does have the ability to actually um, also have uh, certain drugs that would actually be, um, um, you know, distributed to his office for, for purposes of use in the office. Um, so he does have that DEA license um, that allows him to, to have access. Um, we would argue in this case that there are some drugs that 
um, we believe that have no so-called medical use in, in, in the world of oral surgery. Chief, is there any indication that the doctor was using these drugs as well? I also wanted to ask about uh, the information that he was given for Kennedy while at sea, and if you could elaborate on what that was about. Yeah, um, you know, again, I, I think there's some, um, there's going to be more to come out of the conversations that they had via text, the text uh, messages, um, where he uh, gave her information about providing her ketamine while she was asleep. Um, um, ketamine, you know, again, um, these are illegal drugs that, I mean, are drugs that are, can be um, prescribed, but again, has no purpose for when an in individual is asleep uh, to help them sleep or anything of the like. So um, I think there will be more information that will come about that. In regards to his personal use, um, we're still looking into that matter. Um, from, you know, we've, we, we're, we're doing additional follow-up work with uh, search warrants um, and, um, and beyond to see if we can determine whether or not he was using any of these um, illegal uh, uh, prescriptions or, or drugs um, for his own personal use. Chief, a question about, you, you mentioned something about text where he was instructing her as to the dosages and things like that. That is a huge violation of, of medical ethics to the point where you, are you all looking into the possibility that this might not be the first time he's done? Yes, right. I mean, we would, we would, we would look into this from a further um, look into the investigation from a standpoint that there could be, right, other uh, victims as it relates to this, that he might have been distributing these to other individuals. We have not taken that off the table. Um, as a possibility. Um, this is this case was, and I want to highlight that this case um, was brought to our attention, A, because one of the things that um, I have requested our um, Special Investigations Division's um, our, uh, Drug Enforcement Section to do is because we've had such an issue with drug overdoses in the county um, that I basically I assigned to have an investigator uh, be called out to every overdose that we have, whether it's a death or not. Um, in this case, unfortunately, it was a death. Um, so the narcotics investigator actually responded to the scene and observed, uh, uh, again, observed some something that did not look right, as well as the, uh, the, the homicide investigator who also was there to look into the death investigation. So it takes some time to put all of that information together um, to include you know, waiting for uh, an initial autopsy from the medical examiner's office be and, and other witness statements that we were able to gather later on that began to tie these things together. Because, again, it wasn't just as obvious to us from the minute that we showed up at the overdose. So so this this uh, was very fruitful for from our perspective that showed that we are take overdose deaths very seriously, A, and that any individual that's actually um, going to be the responsible party for distributing these drugs and providing them to individuals and causing their deaths. So I think we take that very seriously as demonstrated by the arrest of Dr. Ryan today. Have you ruled out that this was an intentional murder or some sort of assisted suicide thing? Has that been ruled out yet? We, we have not. I mean, we don't have any information that would suggest. Um, we don't have any information that at this point that it would suggest that it was a uh, that was requested suicide. Family members, we've done a lot of interviews with them. Um, they've, they spoke to their, to, uh, to their loved one, Sarah, um, quite often before that she actually did, uh, um, actually passed away. Um, gave no indication at all that Sarah was in any way interested in, in, uh, you know, taking her own life from that perspective. So we think, I think as the totality of the circumstances to include the messaging that was going back and forth. I think it demonstrates that there was an, um, an in, not an intent to commit suicide, but an intent to actually have drugs to make her feel certain way um, that actually proved to be fatal. Chief, Chief was, uh, do we know if Ms. Harris was using drugs before they met, or do you we think he got her on drugs? I we don't I don't know that I don't know the answer if she she I don't know if she was an occasional drug user or whether he intensified. It appears based upon um, you know again. The, the accessibility, I should say, the accessibility of the types of drugs that um, was in Ms. Harris's system is not 
available to just anybody. Um, so it, 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 it begs the question, I think, at this point that Dr. Harris utilized his medical license um, as, a, as an oral surgeon to provide this to, to, to at least Ms. Harris. Yeah, but what does ketamine do to a person when they're already asleep? Uh, I've never known that individuals actually took ketamine while they were asleep. You know, I've known people who've taken ketamine for other effects, but not as a sleeping uh, type of a medicine. Said very, it didn't provide much information at all. And, and if, you know, at that point in time, I don't know how much information he relatively shared, but it didn't give the indication that he had taken any responsibility for her death at that particular time. Do you believe that the authorities were called in a timely way? Um, do yes. You about yes, we do. Chief, uh, you, you mentioned that these aren't the kind of drugs that you would see used in oral surgery. Is it safe to say that these were? In the medical procedure that she had, I'm I'm not following. Can you repeat that again? No, no. I said that she visited Dr. Ryan. Correct, as a patient. Okay, but still that the, none of these these medications that we've discovered that were in her system would have been something that any patient would go to an oral surgeon and expect to get this type of medication. Okay, so, right. Sure. Yes, oh, absolutely. It's perfectly fine. I think she had, like, either root canal or uh, wisdom teeth. Right, I think it was simply wisdom teeth, yeah. Today, when she went into custody, and would you say he's being cooperative? Um, I, would, I would say I wouldn't necessarily be an overly cooperative, but I would just say that uh, his demeanor, um, you know, I don't, I don't think he was a, that surprised, let's put it that way. Uh, actually, I, I, I appreciate that question very much, and I think actually the chief spoke about this before. For, for a, a number of years now, uh, when there is an overdose death, uh, we have drug officers respond, and we also have people from homicide respond. Right. That's we right. do a dual investigation of every overdose death because we have attempted here, in order to drive down uh, the numbers of overdose deaths, one of the ways we do that is by looking at in many instances, we are able to find out who the dealers are, the people who distribute the drugs. And besides the mere dis distribution, uh, depending upon what they've distributed and whether or not they put the drug together themselves and knew exactly what they were given, let's say it had either carfentanil or fentanyl in it and they knew that it was a deadly con concoction, we've tried to hold, hold them responsible for not only the distribution but for the death of the person involved. And, and uh, so uh, this is not a unique situation totally that we do it. Uh, sometimes you can't connect the dots, but we have been doing this for a number of years where we do this dual responder team so that if possible, we will try to track it back to the person that's responsible for the distribution and hold them accountable, not only for the distribution, but for the death. Are you concerned, oh, are you concerned about any more, I guess, victims, victims or people involved in this sort of thing? And obviously this is one case, but are you worried about other cases? Yeah, I, 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 you know, I think we could never, never, um, you know, not be concerned that there might be other victims, right? Um, you know, again, sometimes these things are hidden and, and not known to anybody. So from that perspective, we are concerned. So maybe if this does spark uh, uh, somebody who's been impacted by Dr. Ryan, we'd encourage them to contact our, our major crimes division, okay? Aside from the Well, again, it gives me, uh, you know, again, grave concern that, you know, he did this with this patient that we were able to uncover. What, what, what concerns me is that this may not be the first time he's ever done this, right, that he may have had other, um, you know, female patients or friends that he's utilized these same type of narcotics to actually, you know, take advantage or, or just to provide it to them. 
which is still not authorized. So I don't know the outcomes, of course, because we don't have any other victims at this time. But this this is, you know, again, something that um, that concerns us. I, I will just state that um, the drugs that we discovered, I just want to note that um, they are more used for sedation in a, in, a, in a dental practice than they are used to um, actually for pain for any for any patients that they may have. OK, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good day from up county to down county to stay in the know, like, share and subscribe to our channel.